Hello, how's everybody doing out there? I hope you're all staying safe as well. And boy, it's frustrating for massage therapists to not be able to touch. This is a this is a challenging time. So, are is there an audience out there somewhere? Because I still see some folks from the previous. So I just want to check in to see if there's anybody out there. So let me know if there's anybody there so I know when to fully begin with this. We see some hellos. Okay. All right. So I'm assuming are these massage school students, uh, students in your program, and uh, we'll be joining our profession soon. Hello. I can see all you saying hi. All right. All right, hello. Massage student here, okay. Let's see all the names coming in. I just want to wait till everybody sort of gets gets in place and ready to hear this. Someone said pregnancy massage is awesome. Maybe that person was um, received pregnancy massage. So have any of you received pregnancy massage during any of your pregnancies? Um, all right, still see some more people coming in. So I'll go ahead and just start. Um, so as she said, I've been doing this actually 40 years now. I graduated from massage school in 1979, so I'm, I'm now 40 years into the profession. And pregnancy massage is one of my favorite things to do. Um, I very much enjoy working with the women through all the stages. And so you often hear that um, we have first trimester, second trimester, third trimester. And what do you do during each of those trimesters? So we can go over that and answer any questions, especially about first trimester is what most people are concerned about. And then also um, a lot of folks go into the birth. You know, we actually do labor massage. I've attended upwards of 60 births, which is not a lot compared to midwives. And oh, somebody did have a pregnancy massage. Glad to see that. Um, it's really amazing. I, I did teach a class recently before all of this happened, and we had a pregnant woman in it. And she got two massages during the course, and she came back and said that's the best she's felt the whole pregnancy. So pregnant women really need this. So when we are all cleared, I'm hoping soon, as we all are, and we can get back to work, um, pregnant women are really going to need this. You know, we don't want them under stress. And that stress can actually impact baby's uh, growth and the baby's sense of safety. So we know that mothers and babies are really, you know, one. They're one unit and they're, they're really intertwined. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a, a PowerPoint of the pregnancy massage that I do. And we will talk about um, the... Uh, let me go ahead and get that up and running. She's going to now put that screen up for us. Okay. There we go. Um, and let me go back a little bit. Okay. So as you can see that screen, I can't quite see. I'm still, uh, okay, what are we doing there? I don't want that. I just want it to move. Let me do this. Okay. I want this to be over here. Um, let's see. Can you guys see this? I don't know if you can see that. Uh, when I do that, I, I lose my ability to see what's going on. So let me know. A little bit challenging. To, I can't see the, the questions. Um, I think you're finding, you're sharing the finder window. So how do I go? Sorry about that. Um, how do you get my window alongside of this? Well, I guess you don't see anything either. Nothing's coming up yet. So if my support person can come on, let me 
ask her why we're not seeing that. Okay. So try going back to the screen and share the entire window. All right, let me just go back here. So can you see that? I can't see an answer there. So Jamie, you'll need to tell me, can they see that? No. All right. Well, we might not be able to do the PowerPoint then because I can't quite figure that out. I thought we had that down. Um, well, let's go ahead and talk. I actually, maybe you can see some of my setup here. I put some of the pillows out here. So I use a lot of pillows when I'm doing pregnancy massage. And there are a lot of different systems out there that you can use. Um, once your mother is in the second trimester, we move to sideline. So there are systems where there's holes in the table or there's cushions that wrap around. And a lot of folks might like that in terms of just being able to lay face down. But really, really it's best if they, um, uh, okay, so she's sending me a picture now. That's one image. Okay. I don't, I don't quite know what to do with that. So share your screen. Oh, that's what I have to do. Share my screen. Okay. Let's see if that works. Okay. Do we now have a shared screen? All right, so is that gonna share the screen there? Now your screen is a broadcast. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get to the pillows. No, they're still saying nothing yet. Can you guys see me? You can see me, but you just can't see my, my um, shared screen. Hmm. It's a shared screen right there. All right, we better just keep going. Um, just open up the PowerPoint, okay? All right, can you see that? I can't see anybody else, but maybe you can see that. Oh, it just looks like it's still me. Anyway, um, let me go back and see if you guys, is anybody seeing that? Still nothing? Sorry about that. All right, well, I'm gonna go back to talking because I can't figure all that out. <laughs> um, anyway, so pillows are the best bet. And I really, you know, there you can get all the systems. They're great. There's Oakworks has a wonderful sideline positioning system. Uh, pillows don't cost a lot. So what you want first is a really thick pillow that goes under the head and allows them to have freedom in their shoulder. So that'll be one. You want a squishy one to hug. So they got to have one to put their arms on when they're laying on their side. Um, so... So you did see it for a while. We can see your screen and you. Okay, but I couldn't see it. Okay. Well, here's the PowerPoint again. So it looks like if you can see that. So I'll go ahead and talk a little bit and then I'll check back in to see if you're seeing it. So we have the thick uh, king size pillow, thick one for the head a huggable one, and then the thick one for the legs, and an additional standard one, which really helps with the arms. We begin with sideline. We like a folded pillow behind the back of the head. And the client may relax in this position at a 45 degree angle. Um, okay, so I'm gonna need to call her to find out. Okay, I'm 
We're calling our support person. Hey, I can't quite figure this out. Looks like we had it before. Yeah, so you want to click that square again with the arrow coming out. Okay. And then you should have a like black pop up or whatever color it is. And then you see it's a application window, your entire screen and Chrome tab. With application window selected, you'll want to click the um, the first box you see and then click share. Okay. Uh, Actually, I right, see this. Let me just go to your entire screen. Okay, because so I'm clicking that arrow and it, it's not doing anything. Like when I click that arrow, it doesn't do anything. So I can go back to showing the entire screen and they just won't yeah, see me. Does that work? Let's see you here. Let's. Okay. Is, is my PowerPoint up? Not yet. Try. I'm going to remove your screen. Try sharing once more. Okay. Could it be that my PowerPoint's not in Chrome? Well, that, that wouldn't make sense. That's not it. Are you, are you seeing the PowerPoint? Not yet. So did you, if you clicked share screen, did you click your entire screen and then select that window? Okay. For some reason now we're locking up. I'm hitting escape. Okay, there we go. All right, so click your entire screen. I'm back on. And there's this one. And then I see three things. I see application. I see your entire screen. Is that what I click? Yep, click that. And then once you click that, click the actual picture of the screen and then click share. Your screen is now presented in broadcast. Okay. All right, now you should be able to pull up your PowerPoint and now it should work. All right. Let me just go back and start again. Pull up the PowerPoint. Okay. Should I put it on slideshow or just leave it like that? Well, I'll put it on slideshow. Okay. Okay. Do you guys see it now? Yep, it looks good. Okay. All right. I can't see anything, so I can't see questions. So you'll have to text them to me. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. So back to the pillows. So sorry about that. Technical glitches. Um, so we've got this really thick pillow, one to hug, one under the head. This is a very affordable setup, so you don't have to spend a lot of money. And I find my pregnant women really like sideline. There are those few who want the face down, but you can't do deep lower back work on someone face down when they're pregnant. You can when they're sidelined, and they all have aches and pains in their lower back. Some of you who've had pregnancy massage may remember that. So, um, all right, I'm going to just leave it on messages. So I put them at a 45 degree angle. I usually put a pillow behind them. And then I'll begin with a really good scalp and face massage. And that just feels wonderful. A lot of people don't realize that even the bones in your skull expand when you're pregnant. That's why women tend to get spacier. It's a combination of hormones, fluids, and your head just feels different. They even say your eyesight changes and not to get glasses when you're pregnant. So starting them with their head, just get them out of their head. Not everybody wants their hair messed up, but if they don't mind, feels wonderful. And I use that technique in labor a lot because it's deeply relaxing. You know, if that client particularly likes scalp massage, then that will work very well. The other areas that can come up are uh, jaw tension and sinus congestion. Those are other reasons not to put them face down. 
especially sinuses. And that feels really good to do some good draining. They can get a sinus congestion that's really just related to pregnancy. And then if you add seasonal allergies, it, it can be worse. The jaw is very important to feel that release along the jaw, especially as you get close to the time of delivery. There, there is a connection in the fascial network between your jaw and your hips. So if you're really tight in your hips, then you'll be tight in your jaw. So that's just something to be aware of. And I do this on my ladies all the way into labor. When they get on their side, you wanna make sure that the hip, the knee and the ankle are in a nice plane. So they can really release that tension in the lower back, that thick pillow between the knee and the ankle and make sure the foot isn't hanging off is really beneficial. Um, my moms often say, oh, I had no idea that that would take away a lot of my hip pain, just having my foot completely supported um, so that there's no drag on it. We begin, as I said, with the, the sideline now. They're completely sideline. I can't really demo this um, very well, but what it is to describe it is you're going to have them slide back about four inches from the edge of the table, and you're going to have your shoulders and the hips all in the same plane. Um, so straight along your massage table, about four inches for the shoulders, four inches for the hips. And that means that you direct yourself toward the head for some of the techniques and toward the feet for some of the techniques. I do have all of this on a video if you're interested. It's on my website. Um, then we work the shoulders after we do the neck and just loosening up those shoulders, breast size increase, pulling back and opening the chest up. We all drive, we're all on the computers, we're all on our phones. All those things compress the, the front of the chest, so you want to open that up and feel that whole shoulder uh, getting a nice warm up. The next thing I do is I pull down on the shoulders and um, get a nice stretch of the neck. Now, when I teach this in my workshops, a lot of my students will say to me, oh my God, this feels great. It's like a great regular massage on the side. And that's true. So um, then we have the arms. And so I follow the Swedish model when I work on the arms. And I have that fourth pillow. So if you remember, I have four pillows. I have a thick one under the head, thick one king between the knees, a huggable one. And then I had one more on top of the huggable one to kind of stretch the arms straight out. Oh, what are the benefits of prenatal massage? Well, let's put this on hold for just a second. The benefits are huge. Um, the mother gets a deep relaxation effect. That in turn, the baby feels that sense of relaxation. The stress hormones, which are high right now, drop. When the mother is in a state of relaxation, the baby is in a state of relaxation. It will decrease blood pressure. It will also um, benefit in terms of common discomforts, heartburn, lower back pain, swollen legs, um, achy feet, uh, a sense of well-being. Uh, when you do get pregnancy massage and you get it all the way up to the time of giving birth, you tend to go into the birth much more relaxed. And that can prevent a lot of interventions. Uh, your body works better when it's relaxed. So it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Um, so working the arms, we go Swedish model, head back up. So just following that, I know this is just kind of a quick synopsis of what a pregnancy massage looks like. Um, this is a wonderful stretch where you bring the arm above the head and they get this wonderful opening on the side of their body. And so the, the body is really expand, expanding front to back as well as, um, you know, the sides are stretching. And this opens all of that up. My, my moms really love this particular technique. So one is a, a stroke down the back or the side and the other one is a stretch. So... And then there's another technique where we bring the arm behind the back if they have that flexibility and we work that shoulder blade. Usually what people will ask is, can you work deep? And she's still working her job. So say she's another massage therapist. Um, say she's a hairdresser. Uh, say she's working on a computer. She needs those shoulders work. There is a point we stay away from and it's very deep 
right here. It's called gallbladder um, 21. And we don't press deeply on it, but we can massage across it. And the reason we don't press deeply on it is because um, there it could descend things. So I'm getting some good questions about contraindications. And there are definitely contraindications. So as I continue along with some of the pictures, we're going to effleurage down the back. We're going to do some opening in the waistline. Uh, this is a nice stretch. So if your mother, as we move farther down into there, um, yes, a lot of women actually do receive this. Uh, this is a very popular, I get more pregnancy than postpartum, even though I think they really need postpartum as well. Um, so I'm just going to continue through the whole sequence. We do some deep piriformis work. But as we get down into the legs, um, we do some stretching. And that's a little squat stretch. It might be hard to see how all this works together, but the legs are going to be, I'm going to leave it here because the question was contraindications. And the legs are going to be one of the places where you may see a reason to say, no, we cannot do this massage. If she is swollen up to her knee, it is normal. If she's swollen past her knee, it is not normal. And we need to know why. If it's two legs, it could be something called preeclampsia which means the kidneys aren't functioning properly and the fluid is backing up in the system and it could be life-threatening to mother and baby. She needs to be seen medically ASAP. If one leg is swollen, then it might be that she could have a blood clot. And unfortunately that happens both in pregnancy and in postpartum. And preeclampsia can happen in postpartum as well too. So you have to really assess swelling in the leg. There'll be other times when she may know whether or not she could get a massage, according to that. Um, okay, so there's a question on heartburn. What I would do with heartburn is I would raise the table up a little bit and have them at an angle, or I would, I would also add additional pillows underneath them. So if you can do them sitting up, if you have one of those tables, you could start it sitting up. But laying them sideline, as long as um, it's not too uncomfortable, they can do that, but add pillows underneath their torso to kind of lift them up a little bit and uh, suggest they don't eat a big meal before they come for their massage. Um, these are some points on the feet. Uh, I love working the feet. It's one of my favorite things to do. So there's a hip and a lot of hip discomfort. The medial arch is the spine, the digestive area is in the arch of the foot and the sinuses are also great places to work. Uh, I even do belly massage. So um, some women have some round ligament pain in the four to six month period, the second trimester, and this very gentle stroke moving up from the base up can feel just absolutely wonderful. Um, there's something called rocking the baby, which is really fun, and we'll get the baby moving. Um, and these are some energy holds that we can bring the massage to a close. We do one side, then we roll them over and do the other side. I do the belly in the middle. This is a really sweet one. It's for the baby. I've had babies kicking during that. Um, so these are some of the points you stay away from when you ask contraindications. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got some good stories. Let me come back online so you can see me and I'll tell you some of my pregnancy stories. Uh, this is the uterus point right here. That one can get labor going. Um, I've actually gotten it on a fetal monitor and many of my students have and some nurses who've taken my class have done that, doulas. And so they, that will get uterine contractions going. If you avoid the hoku and the web until that point where you can um, work it when they're ready to have the baby. It's great for postpartum. Uh, pituitary also increases oxytocin. And then spleen six is another point that we stay away from until they're ready to have the baby. Um, these are just some fun pictures, but I actually have a picture of my granddaughter being born. So that's kind of a beautiful thing. And I was there, I was massaging her through her entire pregnancy and I was there for the labor and didn't have time to do a lot of massage, but it worked out really well. So I'm going to take it off of this now and escape.
and come back to you guys. So, hello. All right. So now I can see it. Um, okay. So you, you got to see a very quick rundown of um, some of these things that, that are what I do with pregnancy massage. So let me go back. Somebody asked me um, a really fun one. Let me go back and find that. Um, have I ever done, ha, are there any women who went through labor naturally after getting a massage? Yes. Lots of them actually. I've had two in my classes that um, both first time mom, one in Wisconsin, actually in Madison. I was at an AMTA conference and she got massages as my demo. And then she got a massage. She was my labor demo. And then she got another massage for the, from the class when they did their practicals. And then that night we were all co in the same hotel. She could, I saw her at dinner and I said, you're looking a little funny. What's going on? She said, I feel like somebody's dancing on my cervix. And um, she was breathing heavily. She wasn't eating as well. I thought, mm, things are happening. So I said, here's my room. Call me when you need me. And I did some labor massage on her. She left about eight o'clock in the morning. This was the third day of my three day class and delivered at 12 noon, completely natural, first baby. Luckily, the birth center was about 20 minutes away. And uh, it's a great story. And I had another one in my class who, uh, luckily her husband drove over to class. We we're very glad of that, because I don't like laboring women to drive. And she stood up after a birth video I had shown in my presentation. And she said, I don't think I'm peeing. And we have four labor and delivery nurses in that class. <laughs> we're like, okay, we're good. <laughs> So I said, have you eaten today? And she had not eaten much. I said, you need a protein smoothie. So she, her husband, we called him in and she got a protein smoothie and literally door to door, 12 hours, first baby. Uh, the lady who's my, on my video, um, I massaged her six hours off of my massage table to delivery. Next baby, three and a half hours off my massage table to delivery. So I've done a lot of labor births. I mean, I could just keep telling stories for another you know, a couple hours. Um, so it really works. And if more women had us, I believe there would be less intervention because the deep relaxation effect, really bodies are intelligent. They know what to do. Um, so how often throughout the pregnancy do clients come from massages? I say in the second trimester, it's great to come once a month if, if money's an issue. If you don't have a money problem, come every week. I'd, I'd be glad to see you, no problem. Um, so, uh, once a month in the second trimester, and when you get to third trimester, when you have more discomforts, cause you're bigger. And some of you might remember that, uh, about every two weeks. And if she is one of those people, and I, I will, I will definitely cut my price to help people out. Um, I say come two weeks before your due date because the baby could come early. And if you get a massage, then and the baby doesn't come, then, you know, they could get one as we're closer, you know, so um, I'm located in North Carolina. Um, I do travel to Chicago to teach. So um, my daughter happens to be there right now and pregnant and very sad because we had a class scheduled for early May and we had to cancel it. Um, and she would have been one of the moms at the workshop. She's due the end of July. So I'm hoping to get up there and she is having a home birth, which I'm very grateful for. It's her third baby and she, she does pretty well. Most of my pregnancy massages, I'd say second trimester are about 60 minutes. Third trimester, 80 to 90. Um, oh, sciatica. Well, that was in my PowerPoint. I know I did go through that very quickly. So the sideline work really loosens up sciatica because you can get in there and you can open up the pelvis, you know, just kind of stretch it. So this hand is in the front and this hand's in the back. Um, it's kind of hard to show like that, you know. But um, I do sideline where we, we get the leg off the table and I work that piriformis. Um, I get in there and I do some stripping into the sacral areas and the glutes. Um, and then there's points on the feet. I work the hip and the, the sacrum. Um, I do some of the stretches help. So all of that can help the sciatica. Does it matter how far along multiple babies, any contraindication to that? Twins are generally not a problem. Uh, you might want doctor's permission if you're concerned about that. Most times I stop doing abdominal massage on anybody with twins because there's two in there and I don't know what positions they're in. 
I have had one lady with triplets and that was really fun. And I had to go to the hospital and work on her there with doctor's permission uh, because she is high risk. So uh, you don't get a lot of triplets, but you might get some twins. Okay, um, I, when I was in the third trimester, I was told hands and feet should be avoided because it's gonna trigger labor. Nope, that's a myth. I love to dispel myths because that's not true. You can work the hands, you can work the feet. Babies don't come till they're ready. If we could really get all the labors going, we'd be there, you know. Um, although generally they don't tend to like um, giving up their power, so to speak, in the hospital because they prefer to use drugs and interventions because that's what makes money. But yes, you can do all those things. A good hand massage, a good foot massage. I always feel very sad when I hear a pregnant woman say, well, they didn't work on my feet. And I'm like, oh my God, your feet need to be worked on. So I did show at the very end, and I can, you know, pop that back up if that's a, a request and kind of do another quick run through so you get to see it again. Um, yes, you can work on their feet. And I've done lots of women where they'll come to me for, and I never call it an induced labor. That's a very medical term. I call it labor stimulation. And so they'll come and I'll stimulate all the points. But, you know, I'm of the belief system that Babies choose when they want to be born. And they're choosing that time and that moment to come in. And I think we should really let them do that. Um, I think they're happier when they do that. Um, so I can support a labor getting started if it needs a little jump start by working those points. I can use them in the labor to keep things moving along at a nice pace. Um, so it can help a lot. Um, so definitely if she's overdue, I've had lots of women come to me on Friday or Saturday because they're going to induce them on Monday. Um, and most often they go, they have babies before they get induced. Because once they induce, they could be putting Pitocin. If you don't know what Pitocin is, Pitocin is a drug that actually clamps everything down. I mean, it just squeezes you. And when you have a contraction, it's like you're squeezing. And then you go, okay, I'm, I feel a little better. I can breathe. And then you're squeezing, but uh, Pitocin, any of you have had it, it's clamping down. It's not stopping. If you haven't had an epidural, you'll need an epidural. Epidural can slow labor down. Labor slows down. Baby's heart rate goes down. We're, we're, we're sending you in for a cesarean. So we have one out of three women in our country have a cesarean today when we had a 6% cesarean rate in 1970. So we know things aren't right. We know that. And so how can we help them? I try to help them ahead of time. Um, so how far along can the mother be to receive this massage? Well, I, I do it all the way through labor. I've been to lots of births. I've even been to a cesarean and massaged for 20 minutes after the cesarean in the recovery room. The nurse thought it was fabulous. Um, let's see. If so, how many weeks must you avoid those areas? We don't do the labor stimulation points till they're about two weeks to their due date. Is if the baby came two weeks early, the baby's fine. Um, and that meant the baby wanted to come early. Uh, so it won't work unless the baby's ready. And you can do all those things. And it's kind of like doing a warm up, you know, doing your stretches ahead of time before uh, an, an event if you're an athlete. Um, let's see. Okay. So students, please email admissions regarding attendance. Okay. Um, would this help with SPD while pregnant? So tell me what you mean by SPD. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, is there a way to use a massage to stop or slow down preterm labor if needed? No. No, it's drugs. Um, preterm labor means true preterm labor is that um, the cervix is dilating. There are women who have lots of contractions and they even think they have preterm labor, but no, when you get checked by your midwife or doctor, you're dilating and they're gonna put you on bed rest and they're gonna put you on medications and that's a whole medical thing. I do work with preterm labor. I have to go to their homes because they can't get out and drive. Um, I need doctor's permission and it does help with the stress that they're under, but it won't stop nothing. It, let's say we can even talk, we haven't talked first trimester. I'm kind of talking faster and it gives you my whole class in an hour. Um, and so 
You can't stop a miscarriage. Medicine cannot stop a miscarriage. There's no drug. Preterm labor, they're giving you a drug to slow down. I met back in the old days, you know, we kind of just talk about the old days and, you know, who knows, that might be important information in the future. The midwives used to give you a shot of whiskey and send you to bed to stop labor. Now, not that I really suggest that you drink alcohol when you're pregnant, but if she was really threatening to go too soon, that was one of the remedies. And it wasn't like she drank a lot. She only drank a little bit. So that was an old, old time remedy. Um, let's see. Are there any areas that might be more sensitive on pregnant women? They're tissue. They're, they have more fluid. So don't, I mean, you can work deep, you know, according to, you know, like you always do with a client, you listen and say, how's that feel? You know, is that working for you? Uh, a lot of times you've got to get the fluid to move. You know, they get more lymphatic swelling. And so you need to find out where that is. And wherever there is lymphatic swelling, if there's pain, they could be more sensitive. Um, do you ever do baby massages once the baby's out of them? Um, I don't do them, but I tell the mother how to do them. I teach them. And I did get to massage my granddaughter because she's, she's mine. <laughs> and I have a grandson, and I've done massage on him. And now we got baby three on the way. So, um, so yeah, it's really important for parents to massage their own children. Um, I was thinking of that even with this being, you know, kind of a time when we're not all out and about, but we are with our families because, you know, it's hard to be six feet away from your kids. And we could be doing massage on our children as much as possible to help de-stress them. And they've also found that when you give a massage, it actually lowers your blood pressure. So, so if a woman is in active labor, but contractions are not coming fast enough, Labor stalling can be done if docs approval to help continue labor. Absolutely. And you know what? A stalled labor is very normal. Yeah, you know, sometimes the baby's waiting. Hard to know what they're waiting for. Um, so I have seen that. I've seen a, a, a labor. Actually, I've been to a lot of home births, and I've had two home births myself. Um, I've seen labors completely stop. And, and if the baby's fine, then that's just what the baby wants to do. Um, and then they'll start up again. It's like sometimes they're waiting for another person to get there. I've seen that. And who knows, could be an astrological time, sign changing or something. Um, but yeah, so um, they can do that. But if let's say you're at a hospital and they're, they're pushing her. And that's unfortunately what happens to a lot of women. They're like, well, you've been in labor for, you know, a whole day now. And, you know, you should you know, be progressing. So let's get things going. Let us give you some Pitocin. And, you know, if she's of the presence of mind and has the support to say, no, I will get up and walk around. So when you're moving, active labor is a great term. You want to be active. You need gravity to get that baby to drop down. So when we get in bed, we're in trouble, you know, because we've just lost our best friend, gravity. Uh, women were designed to give birth squatting. You know, we have the, the squatting bars or the things that hang from the huts. And we drop our pelvis down and the baby feels that. Um, so get labor moving, you move. And you can do, there's, in my class that I teach, we do a lot of movement in labor. You know, we do like dancing, moving the hips back and forth, doing counter pressure, breathing. Um, I recently, well, Let's see, she's about 14 months old now. I did a, a birth of uh, a young lady who's a dear friend. And I did massage for eight hours straight, and I'm in my 60s. So I got in there, lots of counter pressure, lots of effleurages down the back, lots of jaw release, take a bathroom break whenever I could. So it's really great. Um, so somebody is going through a doula training and has attended a birth and would love to combine massage license. Oh, yeah, this is... We were meant to be at the birth. Um, there's a really good book called Childbirth Wisdom by Judith Goldsmith. I'll repeat that. There's a really good book, Childbirth Wisdom by Judith Goldsmith. And she studied over 500 tribes from ancient to modern times to see what was consistent for the human being. Massage was a big part of it. So we've always meant to be in there. The women were always helping the other women. We were always touching we were using it. So somebody used acupressure on my son when he was born to help with constipation. Good. Good. Acupressure, belly massage. I do have a PowerPoint on giving my granddaughter a massage. So we'll see how our time goes. I can pull that up now. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, I mean, it's, it's massage is nurturing is part of motherhood. So mothers need to be nurtured into motherhood. And then they're more apt to nurture their babies. And they've done studies with this, with animals, you know. So animals who are massaged during their gestational period are more apt to be licking and nuzzling their children. So we, we need this bonding. This is critical for human beings. We're, we're experiencing this, this event right now. And none of us like it, you know. We don't like to be separate. We want to be connected. And so massage is such a wonderful connection. And, you know, again, I've been in this area for over 30 years. I'm in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. My children were born in Lake Tahoe, California. Um, and I, I see now these kids I've massaged in their, in their 20s, you know, and I massaged them when they were babies inside of their mom. Um, okay, can estheticians get credit also? Uh, I don't know. You'll have to check in with your board and see about that. Um, so let's go back to some of the contraindications. So you, you were asking me about that and I didn't really fully get into all of that. Um, and so we do err on the side of caution in first trimester for a couple of reasons, not that they can't get a massage in first trimester. I got a massage with all three of my kids, all three trimesters, all three labors, all three postpartum, all three got in for massage. I mean, I've lived this work. And, um, but for some women, if they're uh, having a difficult time getting pregnant, and we're gonna have more of that, unfortunately. Um, and so fertility drugs are being used and IVF is very expensive. So if a woman has had IVF, I would recommend you might want to wait till the second trimester when she has a good established placenta. Um, you're erring on the side of caution for emotional reasons, but she's also spent a lot of money. And they also have a higher rate of miscarriage. So that's an IVF, in vitro fertilization. If she had an IUI, which is intrauterine insemination, that's pretty close to natural, and you can massage her as long as there's no other complications. We do get concerned when women are over 40, because we do miscarry more often. I miscarried at 46. So as we get older, uh, we have a thing with our hormones where you've got estrogen and you've got progesterone. So what happens in perimenopause is progesterone drops. And you can still get pregnant because your estrogen levels are still high, but progesterone is the glue that keeps the baby in. So as you work with older moms and with moms who are going through fertility issues, uh, you may want to err on the side of caution and not do a first trimester massage. Could we cause a miscarriage? You'd have to be abusive. You really can't cause it. We're just being cautious. So, so that's one of the things that, that often comes up. In first trimester, you can do face up, you can do face down, but you might wanna have some padding around the breast area because they could be very tender. So I have one of those breast um, cushions that I've gotten and that's really comfortable. So I do keep it lighter with that. Um, Let's see, are there any other questions here that I've missed? So um, let me take a sip of water. Um, so I also do fertility massage, so that's getting to be stronger. Uh, more and more women are having difficulty with conceiving, and that's, that's sad to say especially for those women who really want that in their life. I just saw, you know, now we're seeing more things on the internet because we're home and we're watching it and people are sending me these things. And this one doctor, I forget what his name was, Zach Bush. He said it's one in four women and one in three men suffer from infertility. So a lot of it is that we need to clear the toxins out of the body. So I do a lot of lymphatic drainage. I do castor oil packs. I've had very good success with PCOS, which is poly ovarian cyst syndrome, which is on the rise. So, um, and I've worked with a lot of women through fertility and then through late their birth or their pregnancy, and then some of them might have attended their birth. So it's uh, really been full service. And then postpartum, we haven't really talked about postpartum. Uh, women really need a massage afterward because any of you who've had kids know it's exhausting and you feel like a truck has run over you when you've had a baby and 
you're here you are trying to put yourself back together maybe you have other children uh, or it's your first baby and you're just like overwhelmed um a postpartum i do out calls uh for the first two weeks now some people will not do a postpartum for six weeks which is really a shame because women need that time their, their neck and shoulders hurt they're they're feeding a baby, they're nursing, they get in awkward positions and finally get a good latch on and they're like, oh, my shoulders. And that baby weighs six pounds, seven pounds, eight pounds, nine pounds, 10 pounds, and you're carrying it around all the time and staring at it, you know, and then you really need some upper back work. Um, I'm also a big castor oil person. And so you may find some of that on my website. I'm working on my booklet as we speak, Time at Home. And uh, castor oil on the epidural site is very good because it will also help with um, the scar tissue that can form around the lumbar area where they put the needle in. And I also, once the cesarean scar has healed enough to touch, and she'll know when that's there, it could be anywhere from two weeks to six weeks. We'll do some very gentle uh, applications of castor oil to soften the scar. And castor oil is antimicrobial, antifungal, antiviral, antibacterial. So it's a really safe oil, sticky oil to use. And so I do use it in my all my women postpartum for the epidural site and for the cesarean scar. Um, okay, so what else would you guys like to know? Um, trying to see. Uh, how long can a mother... How long can the massage mother to be received this massage? And if it's true, and how many weeks must you avoid those areas? I think I kind of, so I do either 60 or 80 minute massages and, um, and they're fine with that. I've never had a problem with somebody saying, oh, I'm on the table too long. Uh, so yeah, it really, really does help with that. I'm kind of going back through, um, you will not get labor going unless it, it it's time, so that triggering pressure points to induce labor, they sometimes work and they sometimes don't. You, know, you gotta talk to the baby, make sure the baby knows. Um, how often do clients come? Usually I think I answer that once a week, if they can, or every two weeks, uh, once a month. Um, with heartburn, let me, let me, I can possibly show you, let me stand up a little bit here and see if I can make this work. With heartburn, you uh there's a technique that you can teach them and you just pull down and you don't have to do it for them you can just show so here's the xiphoid tip and it's just a stroking down because what's happening with heartburn is they have this valve and um they are um getting a regurgitation so with that by stroking down that helps and then also about getting them elevated that helps and there are some natural remedies, just some common sense things for heartburn. Uh, basically, don't drink with your meals. Don't eat spicy food. I really hated giving up salt at the end. Um, but yeah, I had to. And um, just have small meals frequently. Uh, ginger might help. I'm really against Tums. So if a client has Tums, I might suggest that they look into that because Tums can actually cause a lot of problems later on. Um, so, all right. What else would you guys like to know as we move toward our last few minutes? So, um, let's see, let's see. Any more questions? So long. Anything else? Great stories. Love it. Active labor. Like that. That burn technique also work. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, suggestions for right after labor. I always get painful massages from the nurses on my belly after labor. Very good question. Uh, well, they're, they're, they're massaging your uterus, and they're getting your uterus to clamp back down. And that's important. That will stop you from bleeding. And I hate to say it, but it is going to hurt. You just have to breathe with it. And if you work the uterus reflex point on the foot, and you do that. So sometimes the nurses will ask me to do it because they know I, I know what I'm doing and I do massage and been to a lot of births and they're busy with paperwork. So I just get in there and I just kind of start 
Um, let's see, I'm trying to get my hand in the right place. So I'll start at the top of the belly and I'll push down and I'll squeeze and I'll push down and I'll squeeze. And you go from a grapefruit or a cantaloupe to a grapefruit to an orange to a lemon, really important because where the placenta was, so let's imagine this is my placenta, that's all blood vessels. And how do you stop them from bleeding? Well, how do you stop bleeding? You compress. So that kneading is very, very important. Um, two, two ways that women died and why people have a lot of fear and concern around pregnancy, especially as your grandmother and your great-grandmother, is women bled to death. And actually it still happens today. So if women, one of the things I will say to my students, if you're doing a postpartum, I always ask the mother, how is your bleeding? If it is a pad an hour, it's too much blood. You need to call the doctor right away, call the midwife, whoever she's seeing. So that is a big contraindication, no massage, get the help right away. Maybe a piece of placenta is still inside. Maybe it didn't clamp down because they had a fibroid, which is a uterine, benign uterine growth. So any of those things could be possible, but that kneading is very important. And I did it for my daughter even the next day, you know, hers was about mm, small orange, you know, and so <clears throat> she did have some postpartum bleeding for a while, but it wasn't a pad an hour, but that's really important. All right, what other questions do we have? Uh, let me see if there was any questions here. Um, any other questions that somebody can think of? Do you want me, so can somebody say yes to this or no? Would you like me to run through that PowerPoint one more time? It'll be kind of quick, um, but I don't know if that really helps. I do have a DVD on my website, so you can order that and it goes through the entire pregnancy massage in detail. Uh, so that's, there's that. I also have a fertility massage in case you have somebody who's trying to get pregnant and would like to try some of those techniques. Um, and I will eventually be back up in Chicago. We might rebook that class for August. So if you're interested, um, you can check my website once we all get the free and clear. But we're praying for everybody to be healthy and uh, for this to move on. So, um, but pregnant women really need this work. They really need this work. And if we can get our mamas to be relaxed, we're going to have better outcomes for mother, for baby. Um, and I find those children, if you've been massaging them throughout the pregnancy, of course, I have a very strong voice. I, I come in the house and it's, you know, baby's maybe two weeks old and I come over to visit, bring some food, offer to do a postpartum massage. That baby turns and looks at me. Says, oh, yeah, I know you. Yeah, you're my massage therapist. So uh, it's, it's, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. So would you guys like to see the PowerPoint again? What do you think? I'm kind of waiting for an answer before I pop it up again. If there is time, uh, I'd have to do it pretty quickly. Let me see. Um, okay, so let me go. Uh, Oh, here it is. I saw it right there. Okay. I talked to myself. Anybody else do that? Uh, PowerPoints. And some massage sequence were right here. All right. So I'm going to do a very quick run through. Uh, really important to think about the pillows. You want, you want the pillows to, um, to be comfortable. So finding your right pillows. Um, side lying is challenging, but if you've got the right pillows, draping is the other thing that's challenging. Um, let me show this as a slideshow. All right, slide. Uh, let's go back up. So head and face. Focus on jaw, focus on sinuses. When she rolls on her side, make sure that pillow is under both her knee, hip, knee, and ankle. So she's supported. That's called the, um, a kneading up through the neck. Feels really good. Opening up that shoulder. Oh my gosh, I just wish we could be together. It feels so wonderful. 
stretching that shoulder out. Yep. Working the arms, keep it going up, up on the arms, up on the legs. Uh, this is a side stretch. I do a lot of stretching. My pregnant women love it. My own personal journey was prenatal yoga and massage, I think, really go together beautifully and really help the mother to be in her body to give birth. That's, that's really important. you got to be there. We're avoiding that, hope, that uh, gallbladder 21 because that descends babies until about two weeks before her due date. You can work that shoulder blade. Long effleurages down the back. Just lots of long effleurages down the back. Petrissage feels great. This is a nice opening at the waistline. Always about creating space. Uh, cat stretch helps with lordosis. QL helps with uh, constipation, actually. This is the one somebody was asking me, what do you do for sciatica? This is part of it. So I'm working, uh, stripping off of the SI joint over to the greater trochanter, getting some nice work there. The piriformis, oh, that's like the best. I mean, you can spend a lot of time there. And you can even get your elbow in there to get those runners, which my daughter happens to be one of those. Um, this is called sandbag. It kind of opens up again, lumbar sacral area. Pelvic tuck, that's one I've used at birth. It works really well for getting the baby down there. This is when they've got severe lower back pain, hemorrhoids. I got to be with you to show you this one. Quadricep stretch feels really good, but very slow. I'm not doing much of a stretch, if you notice that. But it, it does feel good to open the front of the body. So if you want me to sit a lot, this one's called a modified squat. And uh, I added this one in, and my pregnant women love this. And I've even done this in labor. So really opening everything up. We're meant to have our babies with squatting. Uh, stroking up the legs, getting that lymphatic going, making sure there's no history of blood clots or any signs, blood clots, redness, heat, pain, one leg swollen, preeclampsia, both legs swollen, face could be swollen, hands could be swollen. No massage. Call the doctor. Call the midwife. Uh, these are some places on the feet. So we had that question about somebody didn't want to work the feet because it might start labor going, nope, that's a myth. Oh, they love that hip work. They love the spine. They love all of this. Um, I love to work the belly. You know, again, if you know the client well and they feel very comfortable with you, uh, babies really do track your hands and the heat and they, they connect. Uh, rocking the baby often gets movement. I've done that with some grandmothers, and they love it. So that's it. And this is a closing energy hold. And then these are the points we don't work till they're ready to have the baby. Uterus, hoku, pituitary on the big toe, spleen. So those are all of those um, points that you can do with that. All right. I think we hit 5 o'clock. Is there any other questions? I very much enjoyed doing this. This is fun. So I wish I could see you all. Uh, anything else I can help you with, let me know.